All right, here's a Baal Shem Tov story. And like all Baal Shem Tov stories, they say a famous, well-known saying about Baal Shem Tov story, that if you believe all of them, you're a fool. And if you don't believe that all of them could have happened, then you're an apostate. <clears throat> then you're an apostate. So in other words, the stories have been passed down, and of course they've been changed <clears throat> and rearranged, but they're all certainly could be true. <clears throat> Because the greatness of the Baal Shem Tov, we can never appreciate. We can never possibly appreciate how we could do such amazing things. But I can just tell you a very short story. Maybe this is a little story that I'll tell you. I'll tell you both stories. The, the Baba Sali Rabbi um, Yisrael Abu Chotzera, he came to Israel, moved to Israel, and he started off in the city of Yavne. Now, Rabbi Yisrael Abu Chotzera was a from Morocco, and he was a tremendously holy person. Now, the, the tzaddikim, in general, the Sephardic Jews, they don't make such a big deal of their Judaism, you know, to advertise it and to this. And and <clears throat> there, <clears throat> and so there's there were, there were no arguments, basically. By the Ashkenazic Jews, there were only arguments, non-religious, anti-religious, po politics by the Sephardic Jews, there was almost no politics because they believed in the tzaddikim. The tzaddikim were people that were genius in all aspects of the Torah. They rarely demonstrated it unless they had to. <clears throat> they had to. <clears throat> and everyone respected them. Everyone respected them. In the case, and so the, in, in which the result was is they were very quiet and very, you know, unobtrusive. And you, you sort of couldn't tell them from anybody else. Sort of. <clears throat> anyway, so the Baba Sali came, and that's what he was. He was very quiet and very, you know, humble. And he had all these people that just, you know, appreciated him tremendously. But he didn't have like a big crowd or whatever. He didn't have a big, you know, thought. Later on, he did when it, when his name got. <clears throat> anyway, so he moved into Yavna, and Yavna that was going to be his center. And because of that, that started becoming a center of, of other Jews. He was going to build institutions there, and he was going to build to make Torah, places of learning Torah. <clears throat> but there was one uh, ahead of a, a kolel. A kolel. Kolels were married people learn. And he made a statement against the Baal Shem Tov. He said that the Baal Shem Tov, the Goan of Vilna, he knew how to learn Torah. Not like the Baal Shem Tov, something like that. In any case, he made, he made a derogatory statement about the Baal Shem Tov. <clears throat> the Baba Sali heard this. This is a thing that must have happened, I don't know, 50 years ago, 50, 60 years ago. He heard what this person said, and he said, pack up, we're leaving. So if there could be a town where a person could say something like that, and no one says anything against him, I don't want to be in that town. I don't want to be in that town. <clears throat> So the this head of the institution, he came to the Baal Shem Tov, to the to the uh, to the Baba Sali, and he said that you know, I didn't intend, I didn't this, and he said he said to him that he okay, he listened to what he had to say. He's not accepting the apology. You know, you said something against the Baal Shem Tov publicly. You really meant it when you said it. I'm not going to be here. And then when the person left, he said to his helpers, the Baba Sali said, that tomorrow he's not going to have an institution. This person, he's not going to have, and if he does, then I'm not the Baba Sali. I'm not the, the, and sure enough, the next day, for absolutely no reason, completely they decided from the, the city that they're not going to fund his institution anymore, and the whole thing just closed up. And, and he moved to Netivot. That's why Netivot became the center where the boss, that's where he's buried also. <clears throat> Netivot, to, to say something against the Baal Shem Tov because we have no appreciation. We cannot have any appreciation of the greatness of the Baal Shem Tov. We cannot have any appreciation of the Baba Sali either, but we can't have any appreciation of the Baal Shem Tov. It's just above comprehension. Okay, so here's the story, one story about the Baal Shem Tov. Ready? <clears throat> one day the Baal Shem Tov was sitting with his <clears throat> pupils. <clears throat> There's another story, like something like this, which I'll, I hope I'll tell tomorrow. He's sitting with his pupils, and suddenly he fell into this tremendous deep. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> he, 
deep uh, contemplation. And he stood up and he started dancing. He started dancing and he was dancing and dancing. He was happy and dancing. And his pupils didn't understand why, but they didn't have to understand why. <clears throat> so they all stood up and danced with him. So someone asked, can we ask what was the cause? So the Baal Shem Tov said, a few days ago, a woman came into me with a request for children. She was crying. She said she didn't have any children. She's willing to do anything, anything to have a child. So I went into the upper worlds and I saw that it was decreed that this woman would not have any children. It was decreed. <clears throat> for what reason? Uh, anyway, it was decreed. That's it. From heaven, she's not going to have any children. <clears throat> so the woman was crying and begging. <clears throat> so she said, so I said, all right, I give you a blessing, you should have children. Now it says that in the heavens they decree, but a tzaddik can negate the decree of heaven. Negate the decree of heaven. So I made, I told the woman she's going to have a child. She'll have a child. And my the blessing will be fulfilled. Just now I was sitting with everybody. I heard a, a announcement from heaven that the, this woman will give birth to a child. But because the Baal Shem Tov went against the heavenly decree, <clears throat> who knows, maybe in the previous generation this woman had been evil or something. Who knows what it was. Because you went against the heavenly decree, so therefore the Baal Shem Tov has lost his world to come. And that's why I was happy. Now, if I'm sure I'm not going to get my world to come, 100% sure I'm not going to go to heaven, now I can serve God just to serve God. There won't be any little tiny suspicion thought that maybe I'm doing it for myself. And that's why I'm totally happy. And that shows that we can't have any comprehension of what's going on. If we heard <clears throat> uh, well, announcement from heaven, right? Bolton is going to go to hell for sure. No matter what you do, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> I'm going to try to say what well, I don't want to. I, I don't want, no, now I'm for sure I can serve God only to serve God. I'm not going to get any reward whatsoever to be happy, genuinely happy. I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll remember the story of the Baal Shem Tov and I'll think, well, you know, to be sad, it's not going to help. So, so the Baal Shem Tov was genuinely happy that now he could serve God without any possible thought of remuneration. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Uh,